going on turbo nation we are going to go over the best settings for the black ops cold war beta now i know it's a beta but 100 most of these settings are going to carry over to the full game when it does release and there's actually a lot of new things that are different here and some things that are missing from typical call of duties that we have seen in the past but however you know we're going to go over those in a little bit so if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe for more call of duty content and drop a like if at any point you do find this video to be helpful to you so let's just get into the settings here and uh we're gonna start off with the controller settings this is the first tab here my sensitivity is gonna be different than other people for me in cold war six and a six for my horizontal and vertical works just fine for me and for you it might be something else you know that's something that you need to go into the game and find out for yourself but for me generally between five to seven sensitivity is what mostly works for all call of duties and this is what i'm sticking with so for the ads stick sensitivity uh this is for your rifles and this one you want to have generally lower than your high zoom sensitivity which is going to be like snipers so for my low zoom i typically have it at 0 0.80 and for my stick sensitivity for the high zoom i have it at 1.0 because you know typically i don't really use snipers in general but i would definitely tweak that if you are more of a sniper user then make sure you want to toggle that to whatever setting is most comfortable for you all right so for my button layout i have it on tactical and the main reason why is because i use a scuff so this is the scuff controller that i do use i have a paddle on the back i don't use two paddles because this is just something that i'm personally comfortable with if i were to use multiple paddles i feel like i'm just gonna you know touch a button on accident and then it'll make me do something else but however the reason why i have it on tactical is because as you can see it has my crouch and prone as my r3 this would allow me to be able to crouch and prone while i'm on the move without having to take my fingers off of the controller so obviously that's going to give you a huge advantage and then obviously my melee attack is going to be my circle which is something that i typically don't really do much anyway that's why i have no problem with having to take my fingers momentarily off the controller if i do need to melee now my back button is going to be my jump button so that's what i use to jump all right so if you don't have a scuff you cannot go wrong with stick and move so stick and move is going to allow you to jump and stand while your thumb is still on the r3 and that's a huge advantage that i like about stick and move this is what i used to use in call of duties when i didn't have a scuff and this worked out just fine for me all right so for this setting right here we always have it on flip now the reason why i have it on flip is so that i can ads and fire my weapon with my top buttons on my controller this allows a much more responsive shot or ads because it's a button you know it's not a trigger it's a button with a trigger you have a lot more space between the top of the movement till the you till you hit the bottom of the movement when it touches the controller so it's a lot more responsive and plus it helps out better with longer range shots because with the button you can just tap on it and it'll give you a much more accurate shot versus a trigger where you might accidentally spam it and then your gun is going to go all over the place so that's why i play with flipped all right so for inverted look this is disabled this is a personal preference and controller vibration i have this off i just like to save battery on my controller to keep it from dying sooner and also at the same time i feel like it's just a distraction when my controller is vibrating and i'm engaging in a gunfight i just do not want to be disturbed at all so that's also a personal preference uh so this is something new slow down and strafing aim assist now this one i have on because with this one when you have it on it slows down your sensitivity when your aim is on enemy targets and that's exactly what it says right there and of course you do want that on and it also does affect your movement when aiming at enemies to help you stay on target so this one i want on because i want as much aim assist as possible obviously you want the most accurate shot typically they have different aim assist settings that you could choose from however this year it's a little different but who knows maybe in the full game there's going to be a lot more complex settings to choose from but right now this is the play airborne mantle behavior i have this on manual i typically like to be in full control so that i can mantle by pressing the jump button only instead of it automatically doing it for me if that makes sense so grounded mantle behavior so this is when you're approaching objects or walls that you can jump over if you have this on press You'll be able to control that movement and that's exactly what we want because if we had it on second press then you're not going to jump right away you know what if you're trying to get away from an enemy or you're being shot at and you just need to evade from the situation or you're simply chasing somebody down you don't want to have to go through that extra step just to be able to get over something so i have this on press all right aim down sight behavior is obviously on hold this is always a standard for call of duties all across the board uh steady aim behavior is also hold attack vehicle control mode this one i have is aim based i just feel like it's a lot easier to 
point in the direction where I want to go and the tank will go there if I'm driving a tank. For the stick layout, mine is set to default. All right, so for the left stick minimum input threshold, we're going to keep this at five because if you go any lower than that, you're going to experience some issues as you can see right there on the screen. It says values below five may result in unexpected movement. So it's best to keep it at default. And plus, this is what you use to move around the map anyway with your left stick. So I generally would not advise messing around with this input at all. However, the right stick input is a different story so this is basically your stick drift so it was defaulted at five but if you go into game and you notice that your crosshairs are moving on its own then this is when you would want to increase your input threshold so mine is set to 10 it could be different for yours it really just depends on what kind of controller you're using and how the stick drift is on your controller and you do want to minimize that stick drift as much as you possibly can and as far as the right stick max input threshold i kept it at 99 which is what the default was controller sound I have that disabled auto move forward I have this disabled as well auto sprint is disabled now these two are personal preference some people do prefer to have it enabled on both but however for me I want to be in full control of my movement just leave it disabled so that you have full control of when you want to go ahead and walk and sprint sprint behavior is going to be go to so whenever you do release your thumb off the stick it will stop you from sprinting which is also very handy sprint cancels reload I have this disabled because what if you're reloading and you're trying to get away from an enemy and you just want to make sure you have enough ammo to turn around and kill and shoot the guy then you would want to have this disabled now if you want to cancel your reload here's a little quick tip make sure to double press triangle or Y if you're on Xbox so that you can cancel the reload mid animation and that is how you do that uh, equipment behavior I have this on hold all right so next we have the graphic settings so this one is a little different this year and this one is a little confusing so the safe area bounds this is a very underrated thing that not a lot of people do but I do highly recommend that you change it so the safe area bounds it says that to adjust your display area visit settings in the function screen and go to sound and screen so I feel like this is something that needs to be implemented when the full game comes out that doesn't require you to go into your PS4 settings. So if you guys don't know how to do this, let me show you how to do this right now. So you press the PS button and then you're going to navigate over to your settings. Then you're going to scroll down. You're going to go to sound and screen and then you're going to go to display area settings. This is where you would change it. So I highly recommend to shrink it all the way as much as you possibly can until it stops. Press enter then go back into your game and I'm going to show you a couple screenshots as well to see the difference because it's so much easier to have everything centered in the middle of your screen especially the kill feed uh, the mini map uh, how much ammo you have left it's all just very convenient so that you're not like turning your head literally to the top left corner to look at the mini map so you know you, all you have to do is just move your eyes slightly and you'll see everything right there in the middle of the screen so now for colorblind type so this is a little different this year in modern warfare when you change these colorblind types it actually changes the colors of the world as well but in this year's call of duty if you take a look at these screenshots this is what deuteranopia looks like this is what protonopia looks like and then here we have tritonopia so i'm just going to cycle through those so you guys can have a chance to take a look at the differences but the main difference the only difference is the names and colors on your heads up display so for example deuteranopia it has this fainted type of rose color or purple color however you want to see it protonopia has a little bit of a darker color and then Tritonopia has the most vibrant color out there. So uh, it really just depends on your preference. Of course, this is more for people who legit have color blindness and this would be for them. But if you're a normal player and you just feel like you want colors to pop a little bit more, then put on Tritonopia. Tritonopia, I do recommend. But I think the normal red is just fine for me because, because if it doesn't change the colors of your environment, then I find this to be pretty much useless to me, especially since I'm not colorblind. So I'm just going to leave it disabled. I'm okay with the red kill feed and the red text in the heads up display especially when you're playing something like kill confirm you'll notice that the bar is red or if you have the colorblind type on you will see a different color there all right so field of view this is something completely new to console call of duty so field of view just expands your field of vision it's exactly literally what it says and this could give you a huge advantage in game you'll be able to see so much more on your screen and this is going to give you an advantage versus somebody who's using the fov slider at like say like 80 for example you're not 
you're not going to see as much on your screen and you might not even see the enemy that's standing right in front of you so that's why i do recommend to up the fov it's going to be different for everybody else but a good general starting point would be to up this all the way to 105 i think 105 is that sweet spot and that's something that i was using when i was playing pc on warzone and that's what really helped me accommodate to the different fov all right so for brightness obviously you want to adjust it depending on how bright or dim your tv is obviously you do want this to be as visible as possible but for me since i'm a content creator i want the settings to be at default so that i don't have to go into my program and tweak too many settings so i have it at 50. motion blur this one 100 you do want this disabled because as you can see here if you have self only or enabled you do see the examples on the screen it's not that pleasing aesthetically so i would have this disabled and plus when you're moving around the map you might miss an enemy that could be there that you didn't notice before because it's just super blurry all right so for audio i have this on not muted for my mute sound master volume is going to be 100 music volume is going to be at zero i really don't care too much for the music while i'm playing in game i just feel like it's a distraction and i can't hear my enemy's footsteps as loud sound effects volume definitely got to keep that at 100 uh dialogue volume i also want this at 100 because i do want to be able to hear the call outs that are going on in game so that it's an audio cue for me to look in a certain direction cinematics volume i also do have this at 100 as well all right so for audio presets we all hear things at different frequencies however if i'm really trying to hear footsteps a lot better i would definitely recommend putting this on high boost that way the footsteps are heard a lot much more cleaner and crisper and this is a setting that i do find to be much more successful in hearing enemies footsteps versus the bass boost and treyarch mix and you know maybe later on when the full game does come out they'll have more options for us uh, but for now i would definitely recommend high boost all right, hit marker sound effects. I have that enabled. That is a personal preference. Of course, I want to know when I'm hitting an enemy. Voice chat is just personal preference. It doesn't really matter too much. For interface, I have my subtitles disabled. Main reason why is because I do not want any distractions on my screen at all other than what I need to know. So if I have text on the screen, I might look at it momentarily while somebody's doing a call out and then that could potentially get me killed because there's an enemy like literally right in front of my face. Crosshairs, yes, you do want that shown. Hit marker visuals, you do want that shown damage based hit markers yes i do want that shown ally health bars this one's a personal preference it doesn't really matter but for me i have it shown so that so that i know when my ally is being shot at i know that's exactly where an enemy is let's say the enemy is using a suppressor and i can't see him pinging on the minimap if i have my ally health bars on this will allow me to see which one of my teammates are being shot at and that will direct me to that location enemy health bars yes i do want this on the reason why you want this on is so that for example let's say you're in a gunfight and he's quite a distance away from you you're shooting him and you see that he has literally one h p left that would be my cue to go ahead and rush him because i know he's super weak and vulnerable that's why i'm going to go ahead and turn on my enemy health bars on so that it will give me a lot more confidence to push my opponent player names i just have this on the full name it's just a personal preference i just want to know who i actually killed horizontal compass yes i would have this on let's say you're playing with friends and they want to call out where an enemy is they can call it out simply as that and then you can look on your screen and take a look at where these numbers are in correlation to where you're at in-game alert icons i do have this on as you can see here it gives you highlight latency latency variation disconnected packet burst and extrapolation so all of these things are very important it'll help you establish whether or not the host that you're connected to is worth staying in game for and for account and network settings the only settings that seem applicable to pretty much everybody is the crossplay and cloud save settings so for crossplay when the full game does come out it might be a better play to have that disabled mainly because of the hackers and cheating going on on pc so in order to make your experience Experience a lot more fun and enjoyable i would definitely recommend turning that off but the amount of games that you try to get into might be far less cloud save settings so this one says all but hardware related settings will be saved with your activision account these settings will keep the same values on other platforms so if you're currently on console and you got the cross-gen bundle you might want to have this enabled so that everything carries over the minute that you do upgrade to next-gen consoles everything will still be there so definitely have this enabled that about covers all the settings for black ops cold war or beta make sure to drop a like if you did find this video helpful at any point in the video and also subscribe if you're brand new around here for more call of duty content turn on notifications and i will see you in the next one peace